the recent advice I was given was that I should uh, I should tell Yen's guys. There's my Pittsburgh uh, background. I should tell Yen's guys to like the video and subscribe um, if you like this content. I'm going to start doing some different things with the channel. Uh, I know I talked about health and fitness and lifting weights and all this stuff like that, uh, but I feel that health is more than just being physically fit or, or you know, just there's there's much more to this equation than uh, just eating well and exercising, right? And so I'm going to move things in a different direction, or at least uh, start talking about other things that pertain to uh, this world of sports and fitness and everything. Which brings us to mental health. You know, physical health is great, and I actually feel that it is difficult to balance physical health um, with the world that we live in currently myself included, I sit in front of a computer. You know, people used to be out uh, chopping wood and foraging and hunting and they were active all day and now we sit in front of computers and uh, drink Starbucks and all that good stuff like that, right? So the world that we live in today is, uh, it's very easy to be sedentary and it's very easy to consume large quantities of low quality calories. I can't say that uh, I don't enjoy Starbucks. Starbucks is delicious. It tastes good. Uh, but it's not like this is a great source of vitamin A, vitamin D, you know, zinc, magnesium, etc. Moving forward from that, I'm going to get into mental health here and I'm going to tell you that uh, this is going to be an unpopular thing to say because it doesn't feel good. Most of the mental health stuff out there is bullshit. Like, it's mental masturbation. Love your body and accept yourself and, you know, all these things like that. And I don't... I, I think it's all bullshit. In fact, actually, if you know people in the fitness industry... Um, I'm not in the fitness industry, by the way. I realize that there's, there's an overlap and most people don't understand this. I'm in strength and conditioning. Uh, which is actually very different from fitness. I'm not a personal trainer. I don't help people with fat loss. I don't, uh, I don't do body composition type shit unless it's like a situation where someone has to make weight for a fight. Uh, you know, I've certainly helped football players put on weight, uh, but I'm not putting people on stage. I'm not getting people stage lean. Okay, uh, I'm not doing the aesthetics as everyone refers to it. But I have plenty of friends who do. And I have these discussions with them, and um, a lot of the fitness influencers that you guys follow, and this is not a knock on them, like I'm not attacking them, I'm actually sympathetic, I feel bad for them, a lot of them have serious mental health um, issues. Most of it probably being eating disorders. A lot of them have struggled with anorexia, bulimia, binge eating disorder is a big one. Um, just listen to any of these bodybuilders, even the natural bodybuilders, amateur bodybuilders, talking about how they rebound off of shows and they have this insatiable hunger and they're binge eating all the time. Okay, And then, of course, you have the body dysmorphia. I'm not thin enough, I'm not big enough, I'm not muscular enough, you know, all these things like that. You guys can go on PubMed and find tons of papers talking about bodybuilders and having, like, body dysmorphia. It's very common. Um, you can find tons of information about figure competitors suffering from anorexia, bulimia, binge eating disorder. This is not uncommon, okay? This is uh, unfortunate, though. These people look physically healthy, and uh, I would argue that your mental health is actually part of your health. Uh, I don't think that that's a very controversial statement. Um, and so I feel like the physical side is, it's not even half the equation as far as I'm concerned. I realize that you can make the argument, oh, it's 50-50. You have to have 50% physical health and 50% mental health. But um, 
I would disagree. I would say that your mental health is far more important than your physical health, and that's coming from someone who has serious physical health problems. Um, you know, I had, Jesus, I had an adrenal crisis at one point. Um, I was close to death. My mental health was far more important than my physical health. Even now, I'm, I'm not a healthy person physically. Um, you know, I was in a car accident. I've discussed this before. Um, I will touch on this very briefly. I don't have PTSD or anything from my car accident because I don't remember it. Like, you can't... I don't know how to explain that to people, but, um, you know, everyone assumes that I would be traumatized by this terrible accident. You know, I had this head injury and all this stuff like that. The thing is, I don't remember it at all. Um, and so that's a very different situation because I've talked to many people who have been in car accidents. I've made friends with people simply because they were in a very serious car accident themselves. And a lot of them have anxiety around driving and things like that uh, because they remember their accident. Oh yeah, I remember I was driving down this road and a deer jumped out and I jerked the wheel to avoid the deer and the next thing I knew the car was flipping over and it threw me through the windshield or through the side window or something like that and they had all these terrible things happen to them and it I feel awful. Like I hear their story and I'm like, wow. God, it's amazing you survived that, you know? Um, I, I can't tell you that about mine. I was stopped at a red light. I heard screeching tires. That's it. That's the last thing I remember. I, I, I don't even, I don't remember getting hit. Uh, I don't remember what happened after that. I don't know how I got to the hospital. I don't know what they did at the hospital. I don't remember anything. I don't remember pain. I don't remember any of that. Um, last thing I remember, sitting at a red light, heard screeching tires, and I looked up at the rear view mirror, and I can't even remember if I saw anything before or not. And then my next memory is being at UPMC, and uh, I had an IV in me, and I had electrodes all over my chest, and I had all kinds of stuff wired up to me. That's all I remember. I don't remember anything from point A to point B. So uh, I, uh, I don't have PTSD from my accident, but many people do. And I would argue to you that the mental health side of things is far more important than your physical health. You know, you could have your legs broken in an accident, but if you're mentally uh, in a good place, you're going to be all right. Now, uh, coming back to this whole mental health thing. I feel that most of the advice out there is not useful. I listen to it because uh, this is actually an area of interest of mine. Um, and, uh, and Julie, actually, um, she does behavior analysis, which is not really psychology. Uh, I realize that it gets lumped in with the psychology departments at many schools, but this is not like clinical psychology. Like Behavior analysis does not... Um, like, they don't study depression and stuff. Uh, like, they figure out, you know, animal behavior and, you know, how do you teach a rat to push a lever or how do you teach a pigeon to do this thing or it's all behavior. So behaviorism is, it's lumped in with psychology, but it's it's different. Um, and in any case, uh, she is in the psychology department. And so, of course, you know, she um, participates and, and uh, collaborates with people who do clinical psychology as well, uh, you know, because that's just like the other people in her department, like some of them teach clinical psychology. This is not a knock on any of these people. I think that they are all genuinely trying to help. I just don't feel that a lot of these things actually are helpful. Uh, you, you know, you look at a lot of the advice out there on depression or, you know, any of these eating disorders and, um, we can see that it doesn't work. You know, anorexia is one of the most deadly things you can have, actually. I don't know if people know that. Uh, people with anorexia die, and um, it's very hard to treat. And a lot of people overcome it and then relapse. Where am I headed with this? Because I always have a piece of advice for you guys. And this is one of the things that I would like to share with people is stoicism. Um, personally, for me, 
one of the things I found extremely beneficial during my recovery, uh, which was a very extended recovery, and I attribute um, I attribute my mental health, the fact that I didn't go down a dark hole or anything like that, uh, to the fact that I had a friend uh, who, upon hearing about my accident and everything I was going through, uh, got me a book, Man's Search for Ultimate Meaning, uh, by Viktor Frankl. Now, there's Man's Search for Meaning, which is a fantastic book, but Man's Search for Ultimate Meaning apparently was the second one that he did. Like, he revised what he wrote previously and updated it. And so I read Man's Search for Ultimate Meaning, and I was like, this is very good. Um, you know, the lesson that people often take away from this is you can't control what happens to you, but you can control your reaction to it. You can control your response to it. Right, so um, Viktor Frankl, he's in a concentration camp and still chose to say thank you when he was given food. He chose to be grateful. Think about that. You're in a concentration camp. You're starving. This is a terrible situation. And yet you find moments to have gratitude. And so this is actually something that I practice uh, daily, all the time. In fact, actually, every meal I sit down, and I don't just dive into my meal. I actually sit there and I look at the food, and I think to myself how I am appreciative and grateful that I have food. It takes a moment, right? like five seconds. Stop and look at your meal and practice gratitude. I lay down in bed, and I think to myself, I am grateful to have a bed to lay in. It's warm. I have air conditioning when it's hot. I have heat when it's cold, and uh, I am very grateful to have a roof over my head and a bed to sleep in. Uh, stupid things. I, I have an appreciation of things that other people don't because I've lived uh, a weird life, and I've had experiences that other people haven't had. Every day, to me, it is a miracle that the lights turn on. You flip a switch and you have light. If you've ever lived somewhere where there wasn't electricity, you will appreciate electricity. I have hot water. I can turn on the tap and have hot water. I can drink the water. Have you ever traveled somewhere where you couldn't drink the water? If you haven't, and that's, this is not a knock against you if you haven't, uh, if you haven't, okay, stop and think about that for a moment. There are places in the world where you can't drink the water. Hmm. We're very fortunate to live in a place where you can turn on the tap and drink the water. You're never out of water. You're never in a situation where, oh, we might die because we're going to not have water for an extended period of time. No, I turn on the tap. In fact, if I didn't have water, on the tap, I'm. Uh, if I understand correctly, you can walk into like a Burger King or, or uh, you know, something like that, and ask for water, and they have to give it to you even if you're not purchasing anything. Uh, that's an amazing thing. And in fact, actually, I, I bet if you just walked into a Starbucks and said, "Hey, I'm really thirsty. I don't have any money. I just need some water," they would probably give it to you. That's pretty amazing when you think about it. And so you can be grateful for those things. You can practice gratitude for those things. And so, like I said, Viktor Frankl, Man's Search for Ultimate Meaning, which of course led me down a path of reading Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. And then I discovered Ryan Holiday wrote an entire book, uh, which was fantastic as well. And uh, I have developed, I don't want to say a Stoic philosophy, because I am not nearly as uh, well-adjusted as you know, Epictetus or something. I, I, I am not going to sit here and pretend like nothing ever bothers me. Um, but I will say that having learned these things, uh, it has definitely enhanced my life and made my life better. I am less likely to react to things. In fact, like if someone cuts me off in traffic, anyone who has ever driven with me will tell you, if someone cuts me off in traffic, I never get angry. I'm just like, whoa, and I back off. I let that person cut me off, and I just assume that person must be having a bad day. Uh, people get nasty with me at, you know, whatever, a restaurant or, or some situation, a grocery store, 
and I'm just like, hey man, like, I don't want any problems, like, it's cool, like, just go, whatever it is, I just assume that person's having a bad day, I don't assume that person's a bad person, that's very important, um, if I get into an, I don't want to call it an altercation, because I never let it escalate that far, if I get into a situation where someone is being hostile and aggressive towards me, I quickly de-escalate things by just being like, hey, like, I'm really sorry, like, I, obviously, I, I must have misstepped, it must be my fault, even if I know it's not my fault, and I tell them, listen, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have any issue with you, I just want to go on my way, and, you know, just, I'm sorry for this misunderstanding, and usually, that the guy, that's the end of it, like, people will do what they want, they would cut in line, or whatever the shit it is that they're doing, um, but, you know, like, that's the end of it. I just let it happen, and I'm just like, whatever. Like, it's cool. And I just assume that person is having the worst day of their life, and they're not at their best. I don't sit there and assume that person is the worst person. They're just having a bad day. Um, and maybe they are a bad person. For all I know, they could be a horrible person. Maybe they go and murder puppies in their free time or something. Um, but I don't like to assume that about people. I would rather assume that someone's simply having a bad day. And that that isn't the person that they are all the time. If that is the person they are all the time, I actually feel bad for them. Um, if you're an angry person all the time, I feel bad for you. Moving forward, I'm going to say something unpopular here. And I'm going to say it because it's the truth. Uh, Jordan Peterson. Uh, now, I don't agree with Jordan Peterson on many things. In fact, I think it's funny. A lot of my friends think I hate Jordan Peterson because there are so many things I disagree with him on. Um, I don't hate Jordan Peterson. I don't hate someone just simply because I have disagreements with them. If I don't agree with your opinion on IQ or something, that doesn't mean I hate you for it. Jordan Peterson's wrong about IQ. You know, he brings up the fact that, oh, well, you know, the military has a cutoff because people below a certain level can't be taught things. And that's like, that's not true. That's not why the military has the cutoff that they have. There are, there are people with an IQ of 80 who can be taught to do a repetitive job. They just don't belong in the military because, well, it's war and it's complicated. And, like, this is more than just some repetitive task. Um, so he, he takes it too far. But there are, there are people with very low IQs who can still learn to do things. Uh, just because they can't pass the ASVAB for the military has nothing to do with their ability to do other things. So, yes, you didn't test well enough to get into the military, but that's even true of, say, the SAT. Oh, you didn't test well enough to get into college. Oh, I guess you're never going to do anything with your life. Not true. Not true. I know people that scored an 800 on their SAT and still went on to be successful. So, that should tell you something. I know people that scored a 1600 on their SAT and sit around making YouTube videos. Um, I know people that scored a 1600 on their SAT and they work as a bouncer at a bar. I know people that scored a 1600 on their SAT and didn't even go to college and, you know, decided, oh, I'm going to be a musician. And now, you know, they work as a barista at some coffee shop. Um, like, just scoring a 1600 doesn't make you magically destined for success. Just as I said, I know people that scored an 800 on the SAT and they are very, very successful. I know people who you know, bombed their SAT, didn't go to college, and then started a multi-million dollar business. Okay. So, you know, is there a correlation? Of course. Of course. You know, you've had a whole bunch of people scoring 1600 and going on to Ivy League schools and being very successful, but it isn't a death sentence. This isn't written in stone. So back to Peterson. I'm going to share this about Peterson because this is the thing I find most impressive about him more than anything else. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you, oh, you need to read just 12 rules for life or any kind of bullshit like that. But what I will tell you, and this caught my attention, Peterson talks about this himself, but I've also heard other people talk about this. People will come up to Peterson at his book signings and tell him, I didn't kill myself because of you. You know, I was headed down a bad path. I was a drug addict. My life was falling apart. I read your book. Now I'm, you know, sober, and I'm married, I have kids, I repaired my relationship with my parents. Holy shit. From reading a book? From listening to lectures on YouTube? That's incredible. 
I can't imagine how good that must feel to have someone come up to you and tell you that, hey, uh, I was contemplating suicide and I came across your work and I changed my mind. And instead of committing suicide, I decided to get my life together and now I'm happier than ever and my life is very good. People say that to him. People come up to him and they tell him that they were suicidal and then they came across his work and now they're no longer suicidal. In fact, they're actually happy and their life is good. Wow. Wow. That should resonate with you. That should connect with you. If you don't like Peterson, I don't care. You can't deny that that's an amazing thing uh, that someone could read your work or watch your video and it made them decide to not commit suicide. That's incredible. You don't hear people saying that about Brene Brown. No one's like, oh, I read Brene Brown book and I decided to not kill myself. You know, you don't hear people saying that about like, oh, you know, I read whatever, uh, Gabor Mate's book and I decided to not kill myself. But you hear people say it all the time about Peterson. I've had friends tell me it. I've had friends confide in me that they were suicidal and they came across Peterson and they watched all those videos and they decided to stop drinking and stop popping pills and they got their life together and now they're married now they have kids now they have a job like they're drug free they don't drink alcohol anymore they started exercising they started taking care of themselves they started eating better all because you read this guy's book yeah That must be a good message for some people. Just like Man's Search for Ultimate Meaning was a good book for me. I could have easily gone down a hole of depression. I could have been like, well, I'm stuck in a hospital bed because I can't fucking walk. Guess I'll just die here. But instead I was like, you know what? Like, this kind of stuff, talking about how you can control your reaction? Yeah, that's that makes sense. I can't control the fact that I got hit by a drunk driver. It's out of my control. Uh... I can choose to let it break me, or I can choose to look forward to making as much of a recovery as I can. Am I 100% recovered? Hell no. I'm nowhere near where I was before that accident. That accident ruined my life. Objectively, subjectively, psychologically, uh, I decided in my head I'm going to recover as much as I possibly can. And I'm going to enjoy whatever life I have left as much as I can. Shit. Think about it. I'm glad I lived. I met Julie. Well, that wouldn't have happened if I would have died. Uh, even the time I spent with my dog Zoe. If you guys uh, know me, you know that Zoe is uh, the most important experience of my life. I, I can't say enough about her. She's the most wonderful dog that's ever existed. Um, and maybe I'll do a whole video about her. I keep telling people I should write a book about her. People tell me, you should write a book about your life. The things that you've done and the things that you've experienced, you know, you should write a book about your life. And I'm like, no, I should write a book about my dog. Because everything I learn about life, I learned from this dog. Um, because she was just amazing. But my point being, okay, coming full circle on this whole thing, I know, uh, is that your mental health is so critically important, and I feel that a lot of the stuff out there is crap. And so I really feel that people would be better served um, reading Man's Search for Ultimate Meaning, that's my recommendation to you, and looking at things like meditations and uh, reading uh, Ryan Holiday's book. Uh, and I will even go as far as to say that some of the stuff that Jordan Peterson puts out is very good. A lot of his stuff about just like clean your room, silly as it is. Uh, you know, you ever have a really messy desk and then you go and clean it up and you actually feel better? You feel more productive? I swear to God that works. Uh, and I'm a person who has a very messy desk. If I ever flip this camera around, you guys would be like, what the fuck? There's shit all over his desk. That's right. I've got like an Acumobility ball over here and a gripper and uh, there's a bottle of eye drops and I've got a package of gum and a flashlight and 
Uh, there's a whole bunch of books scattered everywhere. There's books all over my desk uh, and papers everywhere. They're not even organized. They're just there. I've got like at least three pairs of sunglasses and uh, what else? I got, gosh, I got so much stuff over here. It's not even funny. It's just all scattered all over my whole desk. Um, and so like, you know, every once in a while, I clean it up and I organize it. And I feel really productive. Like I look at my desk and I'm like, wow, everything's all in this place. And then I feel really productive and I sit down and write something or do something because I'm like, I'm in a good mood. Like there's some weird sense of success that we get from making our bed or, you know, um, cleaning up our room or doing our laundry. I don't know why. You know, the dishes are sitting in the sink and I wash the dishes and then I feel better. Why? I have no clue why. I can't explain that to you. I'm not a psychologist and I don't study these things or something, but I can tell you that there's definitely something weird about, man, when everything's all clean and orderly, you just feel better. Like you walk into a really messy room or a really messy house and it just feels scattered. You put everything in its place and everything looks organized and you just, I don't know, you just feel better about it. Why? I, I don't know why, but I can tell you it's true. Uh, it's kind of like lifting weights. You don't have to know why muscle grows, but you know that lifting weights makes muscle grow, right? So this has gone on entirely too long, but hopefully it's been helpful to someone that you stop and think about the fact that um, you can control your reaction to things. You cannot control your thoughts. You can't. They just come and go. You also can't control your emotions. You can feel sad and you can fight it all you want. You're still going to feel sad. Um, if you're depressed, you're going to feel depressed. Zoe died in my arms. She bled death. She died in my arms. You think I wasn't heartbroken? You think I wasn't devastated? You know? But you control your actions. That's the part that you control. You control the action. So regardless of what you're thinking, regardless of what you're feeling, because you don't have any control over those things, you do control your actions. You know, so um, that's the part where we still have power. You can't control the things that happen to you. You can get hit by a drunk driver. You're going to feel sad. You're going to feel devastated. You're going to feel loss because you've lost the life that you used to have. But you can control your actions going forward. You can choose to go to physical therapy each day, even though it sucks. You can choose uh, to continue to attempt to recover and make that effort. You can choose to do that every day. You have a choice. You can quit any time. Like, you could just be like, fuck it, I'm not doing it today. You could. Or you can choose to try. And uh, my apologies go out to my physical therapists, all of them, because um, at least initially in the beginning, I was not a good patient. Um, you know, they would try to get me to do something, and it hurt. And I was like, fuck you, I'm not doing this. And so I was a definitely a difficult patient initially, and so I'm sorry for that. I, um, it hurt, so I didn't want to do it. That's, like, I don't have a great explanation for it. Like, oh, you don't understand how hard my life is. No, it's not that. Dude, it just hurt. Like, it hurt so much that I didn't want to do it. So, um, later on, I appreciated that, yeah, you're going to have to do this thing even if it hurts, because that's the only way for you to go forward. And maybe that's a lot of mental health, too. It hurts. And you have to choose to go forward. Because sometimes you just have to get through it. Um, and that sucks. I can't remember who said it. But there was some line, like, if you have to eat shit, don't nibble. Um, and it's like, yeah. like Just get through it. So there you guys have it. Um... I realize that this kind of seems like it's scattered, but I really my overall message to you is the importance of mental health and the fact that I'm recommending very specific things to you for mental health. And I just want to remind you that just because people look happy on their highlight reel of Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, uh, a lot of these people have things that they're struggling with. Uh, you'd be amazed. Even psychologists, you'd be amazed. A lot of psychologists out there are struggling with things like depression. Uh, borderline personality disorder, they're struggling too. It's not like, oh, I'm a psychologist, therefore I'm just well-adjusted and everything's perfect. No. 
And same with like all of these fitness influencers. They're out there telling you about healthy eating and all this stuff like that. And meanwhile, like they're secretly binging on junk food. Um, and they're really suffering. Like that's the important part. I'm not being critical. I'm telling you these people are really suffering. You just don't know it. And um, so don't assume that just because someone's life looks PG on the surface that it's somehow better than yours. Uh, or that they're better and happier or whatever. I know people who are millionaires who are absolutely fucking miserable. I worked for a guy who made so much money it's not even funny. I mean, oh my god. He was miserable. Money won't make you happy. To a degree. Don't get me wrong. I mean, if you don't have enough money for food, you're not going to be very happy. But like, it's not like there's a big difference between having $2 million and $3 million. You know, by the time you're making $5 million, if you suddenly have eight, it's not like, oh, well, I bought myself four extra Lamborghinis, and therefore I feel so much happier. Um, but, you know, certainly if you're starving and you're homeless, and yeah, money will make you happier because it'll improve your situation. But only to a point. I mean, once you have food and a roof over your head, uh, the difference of you buying a Lamborghini instead of a Toyota Camry probably isn't going to actually make you that much happier. Um, maybe very temporarily as you're driving it off the lot, you're like, yeah, I finally got that Lamborghini. And then like six months later, you're like, yeah, it's a fucking Lamborghini. Like it's just a money pit. Uh, or a Ferrari. Which if any of you out there happen to be very wealthy, uh, I happen to really like the Ferrari 360, the Medina Spider specifically, in red. Uh, so if you want to send me one, uh, feel free to. I will gladly accept and if you guys have watched the video for this long, uh, and you're still here, be sure to like, and uh, subscribe, and comment below, actually. If you have watched the full video, comment below and let me know if you agree, disagree, have questions, uh, or if you want more on this topic. Because I really could dive into all kinds of stuff like the Hagakure, and I could get more into these different mindset type books. Uh, Mind Gym is another good book, actually, if you're in uh, sports. Uh, I have a ton of psychology books. I have more sports psychology books than I should. Because um, sports psychology is cool. Like the science of performance. How do you get over performance? And yeah, that's actually something I can talk personally about too. Because I used to be a choke artist and then I became a clutch player later. Um, which is an interesting shift. I used to be the guy that choked all the time the game was on the line. And then suddenly I flipped the switch and figured out, oh, <laughs> this is how you're supposed to react when the game is on the line. And I suddenly became much better as a as a player because I started being able to uh, channel that energy. Instead of being nervous, it made me uh, kind of like dialed in, flow state, as some people probably call it, or being in the zone. Um, but yeah, I went from the guy who you don't want out there when the game is on the line to being the guy who the coach, my coaches always pick me. If the game's on the line, put Chad in. Because you know that he is going to sacrifice anything to win this uh and uh so i could do a video on that if you guys want so comment below if that's the kind of stuff you guys are interested in if you don't find this stuff interesting and you want me to go back to talking about lifting weights tell me that too um and i will certainly do my best to um cover topics that you guys are actually interested in